what's going on you guys? So in this video, you probably read the title already. I'm going to be talking about the five things that I've learned from this book, Dotcom Secrets. Now, before I share the five things that I've learned from this book, I just want to explain what this book is and who it's for. So this book talks about how to build a successful online business. And it's written by a guy named Russell Brunson. Now, if you don't know who Russell Brunson is, he's the creator of ClickFunnels, which is an amazing software to build your own sales funnel so you can improve your sales. So it doesn't matter what type of online business that you're in, whether it's in coaching and consulting, whether it's e-commerce, any niche that you're gonna be in, you can use that software to grow and scale your business. So basically, who this book is gonna be for is for those type of people who have an online business and who are looking to grow and scale it. Now, just to be more specific about what this book teaches, it teaches you how to be a better online marketer and how to find your dream clients. But it teaches a lot more than that. I mean, it teaches not just how to find one customer and then sell them one thing and then look for another customer, but it also teaches you the importance of getting repeat customers because that's what's really going to scale your business is doing business with people who already bought from you before. Now, before I talk about the five things that I've learned from this book, I just want to first welcome you guys to my channel. And if you're brand new, if this is your first time here on my channel and you're interested in learning different methods when it comes to making money online, then I invite you to subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Now, before I share these five tips with you, if you guys want to get your own copy of this book for free, all you have to do is just pay for the shipping, stick around to the end of the video, and I'm going to explain how you can do that. Okay, so the first thing that I've learned from this book is the importance of having a value ladder. Now, I've talked about that in a previous video that I've done in the past, but essentially what a value ladder is, is a way that you can market a low-costing item or something that you're going to be giving away for free, and this is to help you get your foot in the door with the potential customer. So you can give something away for free that's going to be delivering value to your potential customer, and you're going to collect their contact information, like their email address. So you can market your uh, products that are going to be sold at a higher price to them through a series of emails. So when you're delivering something of value for free, I mean, naturally, somebody who's going to receive that item, they're going to want to receive more from you. So if they're getting something for free and it's delivering value, then they're going to be curious as to see what you have to offer if they're going to be paying you to get value. Now, what Russell talks about in this book when it comes to an example of a value ladder is any time that you go to the dentist. Now, usually, you go to the dentist every six months to get a free teeth cleaning. Then once they have you in the door, they might try to sell you something else. So if you have, like in the example of this book, he talks about that he used to have braces and when he went in for a free teeth cleaning, the dentist was noticing that his teeth were shifting apart. So they upsold him on a retainer to keep his teeth in place so they wouldn't shift anymore. And then they also sold him a free teeth whitening kit because they noticed the dentist noticed that his teeth were getting yellow even though he didn't drink coffee or smoke cigarettes. So that's the basics on when it comes to a value letter. You give away something of value for free just to get people in the door and then you can upsell them your higher ticket products on the back end. Now the second thing that I've learned from this book is how to find your dream customer. Because I mean, if you're trying to target everybody, I mean, the truth of the matter is the majority of people are not gonna be interested in your business. So let's say for example, if my business was selling fishing equipment, not everybody likes fishing only a certain amount of people who are going to be interested in that business. So it wouldn't make sense for me to market to everybody because I'm going to be wasting a lot of money on paid advertisement and getting pretty much almost no results. So what this book teaches you is how to find your dream customer. So this is something that you have to ask yourself. Where are they hanging out online? So if I'm in the if I'm selling fishing equipment online, I have to ask myself where are these people hanging out online? What, what blogs are they reading? What newsletters are they subscribed to? What Facebook fan pages are they a part of? And once I have this figured out, you have to find a way that you're gonna get them to stop them from doing what they're currently doing and make them pay attention to your advertisement. So usually, you would have to create an ad that has a catchy headline, something that's gonna be creating curiosity, so they're gonna stop what they're doing and they're gonna focus on what you're, you're promoting to them. So if they're on Facebook watching cat videos, you would run an advertisement that's gonna catch their attention and make them click over to your landing page. Now, the third thing that I've learned from this book is that when it comes to online traffic, there's basically three types. So there's traffic that you control, which is gonna be through paid advertisement. So if you run paid advertisement, 
you're gonna have people sent to your landing page or your sales funnel so that's gonna be traffic that you control the second type of traffic is traffic that you don't control so this is gonna be anybody that sees your content whether it's a blog post whether it's YouTube videos or even through Google search so if they're typing in a certain question and your website happens to pop up and they click on your website that's traffic that you don't control because you can't control their actions and the third type of traffic is traffic that you own so these are gonna be people who are your followers people on your email list and the people who are subscribers on your YouTube channel so this book explains the importance of all three types of traffic but ultimately what you're gonna to want to do is turn traffic that you control and traffic you don't control into traffic that you own so this book talks about the importance of having a call to action for people to enter in their email address and you're gonna give them something of value in exchange for that so when it comes to traffic that you control if you're running paid advertisements that is gonna direct people to your landing page you're gonna to want to capture their email address and then that's gonna be traffic that you now own and the same thing applies for traffic that you don't control so if they come across your blog post or let's say your YouTube video you're gonna to want to give them a call to action where you're gonna give them something away of value for free in exchange for your for their email address so that's gonna be turning traffic that you don't control into traffic that you own because the more traffic that you own the easier it is to promote your product or your service when they're on your email list you can send you can send out what's known as a broadcast email so you send out one email and it's gonna be sent out to everybody on your list whenever you have a new product for sale or you have a sale going on now the fourth thing that I've learned from this book is called the soap opera sequence so this is basically your autoresponder email sequence that are going to be sent out to the people who are on your email list so once somebody signs up they enter in their email they should be receiving an email right away now the first email is going to be basically setting the stage and letting them know who you are and what they can expect from you in future emails now what this book also talks about is how to send out more entertaining and more curiosity based uh, emails now the whole reason for doing this is to get more people interested in your product or your service so like I just said the first email is just to set the stage and let people know who they are who you are and what they can expect from you in future emails and the second email is gonna be something that's gonna be like high drama and you're gonna end it on a cliffhanger so an example of a high drama email in this book Russell he talks about some guy who flushed 20 million dollars down the toilet by not going with his service because the guy he was trying to work with he, he thought he knew everything when it comes to his business but he doesn't he didn't know how to market that business properly so basically he starts off with the headline he flushed 20 million dollars down the toilet now that's something which which is going to be considered high drama and it's going to build curiosity and make people interested in reading the rest of the email now the third email is going to be something like an epiphany like a realization that the uh, the person who's writing the email came to so it's like the one thing that's going to change their whole life and this is a great way to get people to open up and read your emails and basically what you're going to want to do at the end of each email is give them a call to action just let them know hey if you want to solve I mean if you want to get started with the solution to your problems click this link to get started now whatever business that you're in it doesn't apply to just one business whether it's weight loss whether it's making money online whether it's e-commerce it's always good to give a call to action at the end of each one of your emails now the fifth thing that I've learned from reading this book is the difference between having a front-end sales funnel and a back-end sales funnel so I just recently did a video about this and I pretty much explained what it is so what a front-end sales funnel is what most businesses do is they just market their highest selling ticket product and they just try to get people to buy that product so they just redirect a bunch of people to their highest product and then hoping that somebody will buy it but the thing is when you do that you're not really delivering any value up front so you're not gonna see the results that you wanna see so what I learned is that it's better to go with the back-end sales funnel so this is where you're gonna get people to your landing page and you're gonna give them something away for free that's gonna be delivering value but what you're gonna also wanna do is collect their billing information so this can be something that you're gonna be shipping out to them for free it's gonna be like a physical product like a book or a t-shirt or anything that's related to your business but the whole point is to have it a physical product so you can have them pull out their credit card and enter in their billing information because you're gonna give it away for free but they're gonna have to pay for the shipping now what you can also do is when they click on that next button it's gonna redirect them to the next page and you can then try to sell them your highest ticket product and this is called an order bump so once they enter in the billing information you can just let them know hey before you pay for the shipping to have this free uh, item delivered to you 
you can get uh, you can take advantage of this one time special offer or you can try out our new product by just clicking this button and adding it to your order so since they filled out their billing information on the previous page they don't have to pull out the credit card again and do it all over again because you already have it in the system now you're gonna see a lot more results when it comes to using this method as opposed to having a front-end sales funnel so those are the five different things that I've learned from reading this book dot-com secrets I mean there's plenty of different other valuable gems throughout this whole book but those are the most important things that stuck out to me now like I mentioned earlier if you're somebody who's interested in growing and scaling your own online business I mean this book is something that you definitely should read and if you guys want to get a free copy for yourself all you have to do is just pay for the shipping I'm gonna leave a link down in the description of this video where you can get it for free well that's pretty much it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully you guys learned something new and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in getting started with your own online business but you have no idea where to get started Check out the first link in the description of this video for my personal recommendation. Well, that's pretty much it for this one. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one.